I want to welcome everyone here tonight in Jesus' precious name. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. He said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh 32 this is a great mystery but I speak concerning Christ and the church next verse Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' precious name. I want to speak quickly tonight on the subject the glorious marriage journey. The glorious marriage journey. Because scripture says that Christ wants to present to him, the church to himself a glorious church not having wrinkles or spot. The glorious marriage journey. Our objective is twofold. One, understanding what to do to enjoy marriage. And number two, understanding what to do to last a marriage what to do to enjoy marriage and what to do to last in marriage. Today being the 25th wed anniversary of our wedding, the 16th of April, 1994. Today being the 25th anniversary we could have on this particular day thrown a big party or something else. But we chose to do this. We might do that later on as a form of outreach to a category of people. But I am not particularly a celebration or occasion kind of person. People force me to do some things. Someone suggested whether we we'll cut a cake here tonight. I said, never. The first time I received a wedding, oh, sorry, a birthday card, it was my wife who gave me. I didn't know what it means for somebody to receive a birthday card because I have never given anybody. In fact, I normally forget my birthday. I'm, I'm sure there are some local people like that. It is in these days that people talk about birthdays a lot. In those days, the birthday has passed before I remember. Okay, today is June what? June 12th. Okay, one week ago was my birthday. And so on. So much so that when somebody say happy birthday to me, I didn't know how to answer. At times I say, same to you. <laughs> then I will realize that today is not his birthday, so it cannot be same to him. <laughs> that is how it is. So what is necessitating a meeting like this?
from my heart of heart and from every experience that we have, we all know that marriage, traditional marriage, or marriage as it is in scripture, the ordinance of marriage, is under a monumental attack. Am I communicating? Attack in many dimensions. It looks to me like there is a conspiracy from the pit of hell to make it look like after all, marriage is not worth it. We have the alternative lifestyle in foreign nations where man marry man, woman marry woman, and those kind of things, and the legislation, the laws of it, is strongly an anti-marital, regular marriage operation. We have situations today where there are people who are not married, but they are not, well, they are married. But they are not divorced. They are not separated. But you can't say the marriage is working. Am I communicating at all? There are people, now, now I'd like you to understand that in the position, in the privileged position that God has placed us, People communicate with us their problems on a, on a permanent basis. In a week, I might re receive text messages like maybe five, four. Depending on the week, maybe it may be up to ten or, or less. Pastor, I don't know where to go. My husband has just run away with another girl. That is a regular text. Me and my two children, the house rent has expired. I don't know how to renew it. Another one I received, I think, last week or so. My husband has chosen our 18-year-old housemaid above me. He wants to marry her and throw me out. This is a permanent text message. Am I communicating? So you have such problems. I was dealing with a case the other day when a, somebody just colonized somebody's husband. Said you are not going to get the man back. When the man said otherwise, this strange woman nearly killed him. So we have such situations. And young people are watching and wondering, is marriage worth it? Then you have the situation. We are people married today and they are threatening each other divorce under three months. Not careful I walk out of this thing. I know of those who have walked out of marriage that is less than one year. But I know. And when the, the world sees such a thing, it's a celebration. Because nothing is really real, nothing is real, nothing is working. And I don't want to believe the statistics that says that the breakage rate is even getting higher in the church than in the world. I heard of that from, at the American angle. And I don't want to believe that it is the same in Nigeria. So at the end of the day, there are some lies that the devil wants the world to believe. Some of them are lies we want to knock out.
And if there is no statement that God will make, it is a statement like three days ago, Kenneth Copeland celebrated. That is on the 14th Sunday of April. He celebrated 57 years, 5-7 in marriage. Crisis free. That is a slap on the devil that says marriage cannot work. That says nobody can make it work. Today, a smaller person is doing 25 years anniversary. All this within three days. Three, let me knock off a few lies. Just briefly. The first lie I want to knock off is that all marriages are endured. None can be enjoyed. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. That everybody is enduring their marriage. None is enjoying his marriage. It's a lie. It's not true. He said two are better than one. Not worse, better. For they have a good reward for their labor. I know that Copeland has not endured, is not enduring. I was in a conference for fifth, in a conference in Lagos some time ago where Kenneth Copeland told all of us publicly with his wife standing. He said, for 50 years, this woman has not exchanged words with me on any issue. 50. The happiest woman you ever saw in the world. I know. By closeness, by privilege, Bishop David Oyedeko and his wife are not enduring marriage. Pastor Adeboy and his wife are not enduring marriage. Pastor Paul and Nancy and his wife, far from enduring. <laughs> the picture you saw just now, we just snapped it at um, the roots of Sharon Park here. The garden of the Lord's garden. The one where we are in those very, very terrific glasses. I told my wife there, I told her there, I said, is it possible for this to be acted? Is it possible for this, this now to be an act, a action? That is, it's a script. And you are acting and acting drama for 25 years. That is the first thing I want to say. It doesn't have to be endured. Another thing is, lie of the devil. Those who live roughly, lived roughly and carelessly, fare better at the end or lose nothing. It's another lie. That is, I am keeping myself as a virgin or keep, uh, keeping myself as a man. I am not living a rough life. At the end of the day, the person who did 12 abortions or the person who lived recklessly became more successful than me. It's a lie. There is no day that light can be better, that, that darkness can be better than light. The time will never come where evil will be better than good. Somebody say it's a lie. I told my wife yesterday. Said, See me and you. As young men, we could have squandered our life, young people, in the normal life of partying, discoing, and all that. 
serial womanizing and serial menizing and do all those kind of things. But we lived according to the ordinance of God. Lived in relationship for two years and four months of courtship. Bed undefiled. And I said, is, is there anybody today who lived roughly at that time, carelessly, dangerously, and lived for the devil, who is better rated today? The answer is a capital no. Can't be. And anybody here today that the devil is using circumstances around your life to tell you such a lie. I am here to announce today is the end of that lie. If you are living for God, living in purity, in chastity, and living in character and integrity, no devil shall mess up your testimony later. Shout the loudest, amen. No, I didn't see. Thirdly, the third lie is that marriage cannot be free of crisis or compound conflict is another lie. Now that marriage must, I mean, uh, if the tongue and the teeth live together, they can bite each other once in a while. It's another lie. It can be absolutely free of crisis. Absolutely. Absolutely free of conflict. If the right things are done. My mother-in-law had a medical condition many years ago. How many years now? Maybe like 11 years now. And God rescued her life. She was on oxygen, heart, ischemic heart disease, myocardial infarction. The doctor who, the cardiologist who looked at her then said she, he had never seen somebody of, from here recover from such a thing like that. When praying for 24 hours, God gave us a miracle. She, as good children, we decided to look after her since then. That is 11 years. And she sent me an anniversary congratulation because she was one of those who was around there when we married. I'm sure you know she was around there. She said she wants to congratulate us and to wonder how is it that two people and live together for years and nobody hears any sound of argument privately or quietly for any reason. And she said, I want to congratulate you people. Some time ago, my daughter sent me um, a text message from school and she was talking about, oh, congratulations, uh, daddy, I want to appreciate you, I want to do this. The test was so emotional. Such a good father, such a good husband, such a this and that. So I called her back, I said, excuse me, what is it you are talking about, the way you are talking? Did something, any challenge? He said, no, no. I come across my classmates on a continuous basis. Who tell, who'd always tell me how their mother have now packed from the house. How much the father beat the mother last night. And they send the message to the girl in school or the boy. And the, and the young girl is, is not concentrating in class. And they are telling stories of the horrors 
the mother is passing through or, and the family and she's telling them, I don't, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what you are talking about, but may God help you. And she said, I want to thank you for not causing us to experience such a thing. And I am not talking because there are people when you talk like this, they get angry. People antagonize what they cannot understand. People try to, to undermine a principle that they have not been able to embrace. If there is somebody who beats his wife now on a continuous basis, he will be bitter now as I'm talking. He might be saying it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Okay, if they didn't quarrel in front of people, maybe in the bedroom, it's a lie. He has not told us the full story. Am I communicating? So, but for the sake of such people, we cannot close our mouth on the truth. Because there are thousands of people who must benefit from the reality. And if you have any challenge or crisis in your family and life, I, I empathize with you. And I trust God that before this service is over, God will grant you breakthrough. So, to say that the home can Hallelujah. Look at your look at your neighbor. Say it is possible for it to be free of crisis. It is possible for it to be free of crisis. It is possible for it to be free of crisis. The final lie is that marital love fades away with time. And that it is not possible for the way the man loved his wife at the beginning or the way they felt about each other at the beginning for it to continue, that it is not possible. That is another lie again. The Bible said the path of the just, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18, is a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Psalm 84 verse 7, he said they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before the Lord. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. He said the righteousness of God is revealed from glory to glory. I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. Say for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from glory to glory. Romans 1 16 or 17. Hallelujah. Yesterday, verse 17, as we, that picture, that ancient picture you saw, you, 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 how many of you remember that picture? Where we were looking. I, I told my wife, I said, see also, 25 years has come and gone. And the love is like it was on the, on the first day. She said, no. She is the one talking. No, it is better now. If it is not better, can it come out of the mouth? Can you speak Yoruba if you, if you, if, if, if you don't learn, learn it? Out of the abundance of the heart, I thought I had made a good point by saying that the way we were at the beginning, the marriage is sweet, it's as sweet as when we first met. She said, No, she's the one talking because she's the recipient. No, the Bible says, Husband, love your wife. <laughs> it didn't say, Wife, love your husband. 
Wife, you don't need to beg wife to love. Wife is love. <laughs> Women don't have problem loving anybody. Husband, God, and in some cases, devil. So, it's so, it's so, it's as sweet as the beginning. He says it's more now. I say true. Then I, I concur. It's true. Am I communicating? I prophesy to you. You will never end in a miserable marriage. That amen can be better. You will never end in a miserable marriage. Your children will never end in a miserable marriage. You will live an enviable marriage. Somebody shout the loudest, amen. Somebody shout the loudest, amen. Hallelujah. Say amen. Having said all of this, on the journey to a glorious marriage. If you want a home that is not to be endured but enjoyed. And if you want to know what to do to last in marriage. What do you do? For the sake of time. I am going to be very very sharp. Number one. Talking to singles. Or those who are trusting God to be married. Have a clear picture of your desired or desirable marital future. Have a clear picture of your desirable marital future. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 said, I will stand upon my watch and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run and that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Have a clear picture. What you see affects what you experience. A clear picture. What kind of home? Assumption only brings frustration. Don't marry because you are up to the age to marry. Marry on purpose. You know in the village in those days, they used to package wife and post. When you are in Abuja you know, at the motor park in Garki, they will send somebody to pick you. He said, my son, this girl, she can work very well on the farm. She knows how to pack. In fact, only her can pound the pound of the arm for the whole house. Those were the credentials and other such things. And the marriages were just like, whatever. What is your picture? Do you want to marry because all your mates are married? And so any man that comes is a man? Do you want to marry because your parents are putting you under pressure from the village? And so anything that anybody that comes your way is, is, is a person to be married? Before I got married, the picture was clear. I knew what I wanted and I knew what I did not want. Then I, have, I had marital models in Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, T.L. and Daisy Osborne, and one other person, couple. I saw them as men and women who stood with their wives in a supportive, very, very closely knit relationship. As they impacted their generation, I saw those pictures. 
And to me, that was what I was headed for. I saw through scriptures. Beloved brothers and sisters, that was what I saw. And I identified clearly. Like the lady testified and I told them to do last year. What kind of person, woman are you going to marry? It was clear to me, a woman that will follow me to any part of the world at the shortest notice. The woman who is mission-minded, missionary-minded, for me, yours may be different. The woman who has capacity to accommodate the, a, a, a crowd because I'll, I will be a person of people. And so on and so forth. What is her height? What is her complexion? What is this and that? Wasn't too much of the matter for me. Am I communicating? Let that picture be clear. And when that picture came to be, it was not hard. Somebody say amen. God gave me the opportunity to talk about marriage to only one person in the world. That is the person I'm married to. By virtue of his help and by virtue of clarity of picture. Reject every negative mindset you have about marriage. Because your thought affects your life. For example, maybe you grew with an uncle as a young girl who dealt mercilessly with your auntie, his wife. And that's the picture of marriage you had. Maybe your own family, your father's house, wasn't a marriage but a damage. And you grew up with that mindset. Mindset like all men are bad. All men cannot be trusted. All men are this and that. It affects you. Do you know there are some young ladies now afraid of getting married? Because of what they saw their mother experience in, their, in the hands of, the, of their father. Am I communicating at all? And vice versa. There are some young boys who have not seen any example of marriage. A, a girl, a woman, all the time, 
he sees her father in her husband. And it was a bad father. He tells the man, you look too much like my father. At the end of the day, she walked out of the marriage. Walked out with the children. Man cannot find his wife, can't find his children. Negative picture. Hear me. For every negative picture you have, there are more than a hundred, a thousand positive pictures. If there are marriages that did not work, there are those overworking self. Among our pastors here, there are marriages just like the way we are. Crisis free, trouble free, peaceful. Husbandable husbands, wifeable wives. Am I communicating? I didn't come out of a family from a, of a perfect home. No. Our own was a poly, poly polygamy. I'm not talking about uh, six wives or seven wives or, or ten wives. Let me stop there. But it did not affect me negatively. It only affected me positively. How? Whatever I saw as a child in this setting, my children will never see. That was a vow. Whatever my mother experienced in this climate as a wife, under this kind of setting, my wife will never experience it. It was a vow as a young man. Before I ever went to the university, I vowed a vow. That I, I would, even before I talked about the Kenneth Copeland and Co, it was a determination to leave such a, a, an enviable home that is everything opposite what I grew up to see. You make up, you make your choice, and your choice makes you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. I communicate at all. Knock it off. Look for scriptures. Get revelational light. Look at mentoral role models who are living lives that are positive, lives that are exemplary. Look for them. Look at them. And then make up your mind. Give that guy here and this girl there came up and succeeded, then I can succeed. I saw all manner of comments from this picture. Someone said the mustache did not start today. That was what he saw from the picture. <laughs> you can take the picture now, let me concentrate. Reject every negative mindset. Use scripture to reset your mind. What did I say? Use scripture to reset your mind. It's possible marriage can work. If my parents' marriage did not work or my uncle's marriage, marriages did not work or marriages that I know in the neighborhood, if they did not work, mine will be the first example of a marriage that works. Not determination. Number three, know who you want to marry. Someone say, oh, what is the meaning of that? It means that many people married strangers. Many people married who they didn't know. They didn't know them. If they knew them, they wouldn't near them. Genesis chapter 29 and in verse 23 and it came to pass in the evening that Jacob packaged Leah 
his daughter, and brought her to Jacob. And he went in unto her. He was more interested in container, not content. Verse 24. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah, his maid for an handmaid. 25. And it came to pass in the morning. Behold, it was Leah. He thought it was Rachel because it was Rachel he labored for. And he said to Laban, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve you for Rachel? Why did you deceive me? You beguiled me. And Laban said it must not be done in our country. So to give the younger before the firstborn, fulfill her week, do labor for this one as well, and I will give it to you. Now, this is a major challenge. A whole human being you wear with a whole human being, Gabadaya. Night till morning. Were they identical twins? Even if they were identical twins, there was no, you couldn't distinguish in their voice. Or they gave you choir to drink. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe Labor gave him the palm or Lorazi palm or something. Just, oh, they gave him choir to drink. In the morning you woke up to realize that this is not the person I want. We might laugh at Jacob, but many people march to the altar with somebody they don't know. Only at the reception, the person manifested. Do you know I told you a story before that somebody told his friend at the reception, he's sitting with reception man with his wife. He told his friend, say, I just realized I have made a very terrible mistake. He said, terrible mistake? Which mistake? This marriage. This marriage. Terrible mistake. The same day, sir. The same day of the wedding. Marriage to who they didn't know. In our place, they say, if you want to marry for bachelor, and you tell him, I will marry for you next month. He say, why not today? But he has been bachelor all these years. That is what I'm saying. I beg you for the sake of your future. Human beings at times can act. Mama, good morning. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. That is the mother of the man. Is greeting like that. Darling, I'm grateful. In fact, what will I do without you? Only for one day of marriage. Mama, your food is on the table. Which table? How many tables are there in the house? Then the man realizes he just married knife, not wife. And the man, just there, gentleman. Hello, baby girl, come. Open the door, go. Open the door, sit. So happy. I've met very bad, many bad girls before you. You are such a good girl. One day in the house, you realize he's a lion. Negative lion. It will never be your portion. I said it will never be your portion. 
That statement appears simple, but it is deep. Know who you want to marry. Two ways to know. First, give it time. Number two, which is what I'm going to go, ask God to show you who that person is. Lord, who is this girl? Show me who this girl is. Show me who this man is. Someone say amen. Today there is, people literally don't have anything called courtship anymore. After one month, after two months. Saw the person today, they married in, 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 within two months. I was talking to someone the other day. I think they saw in January married in March or, or something. And I'm saying that because the marriage is total mess. What do you say, amen? Is, is anybody getting anything at all from here? <laughs> know who you want to marry. Maybe the next point should have come before this point, but no challenge. Number four, seek God's will and direction. God's will and direction. You know what the Bible said? Proverbs chapter 19 verse 14. Look at what it said. House and riches your father can give you. They are the inheritance of fathers. But or end a prudent wife is not from recommendation. A prudent wife it's not by what your eyes can give you. A prudent wife and a quality husband is from the Lord. It's in the Bible. Somebody say, but I don't know how to see vision. It doesn't, it doesn't need to reach vision. If you know, if you have a conscience, and you have the fear of God, that is enough. A prudent wife, a wife that will not give you problem. A wife that, is, that will not give you challenge. A wife that will not be a thorn in your flesh. It's from the Lord. A husband that will make you the envy of other women. It's from the Lord. Why don't I wait on the Lord therefore? Lord, if Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 or from verse 4 so shall thou find favor and good understanding. I'll go to verse 5. Delight yourself in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't base things on the way you think or feel. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Hello? That girl was looking for who can give her flower. If she married a non-flower giving man, plus any other thing she was looking for, wahala. This is the point. As a person, God knows your personality. He knows your attitudinalities. He knows your emotional complexity. He knows your, your proclivities and tendencies. He knows your vision, your passion. So he packages a person that can accommodate you. 
not just accommodate you, a person that can, can compliment you like a second half of yourself. That is why God must be giving leverage. Hello. God knows your content and knows your future. So he knows whoever is compliant with that content. You know how uh, some computer systems are comp uh, is it comp co compliant with certain things? You know who is compliant with that makeup and who can accommodate your future? My wife has helped to compliment me, not complicate my life. That is why God, how many of you have heard where some people said we married under one month, the man changed. Have you heard such things? How many of you have heard such? Under three weeks, under three months, the woman changed. Listen, God knows who will soon change. He knows who will soon change. That is why, Lord, and some people are afraid of the will of God. If I ask God for the will of God and he directs me to an ugly person, what will I do? <laughs> I don't have any challenge, but <laughs> I'm very, very sorry if I say what I'm about to say now. If I ask God for the will of God and he gives me a very short and fat man. And I don't like such people. <laughs> what will I do? Please, don't look at God as a wicked God. God is not like that. He is very loving. His commandments are not grievous. He won't give you serpent if you ask for fish. No! He won't give you stone when you are looking for bread. I told you. Let me tell you. I told you that when I was telling, asking God for who to marry, this is the height or this is the color or this is the tribe. That was not on my list. It may be on your own list. Don't misunderstand me. And it may not be wrong. But for me, I was dealing, and it was a risk too for me because I didn't ask for any physical thing. The question is, did God give me something that I will physically hate? The person that you can see there, is he a hateable personality? No. No. You understand? Some people say, I am afraid in case I tell God, give me the will of God. He will give me. Oh, ignorance is very bad. In those days, actually, there were people who were saying things like, I marry that girl only because it's the will of God. If not for the will of God, I wouldn't have married. It's a lie. It's not will of God. Satan show you vision. Yes, can never be. Can never be. That is imparting God with wickedness. It can never be. Far it be from the most high to do wickedness. Can never be. Am I communicating? Please, don't be afraid. Whatever God will give you is more wonderful than how beautiful you think it will be. 
Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Are you getting anything from what I'm saying at all? How will God lead me? Maybe I reserve it till next Monday. You say there is another event for youths and singles. Give you the details in the one Easter Monday, right? Because if I'm to include that here, we'll not finish here tonight. Let God, trust God to direct, to lead you. Don't let time pressure or pressure from anybody hurry you into what may not be the will of God. What have I said so far? Number one, have a clear picture of your desired or desirable marital future. Number two, reject every negative mindset, especially concerning the issue of marriage. Number three, Know who you want to marry. Don't get into a whole lifetime spent with a stranger. Number four. Seek God's will and direction. Number five. Lay a strong spiritual foundation for the future. A strong spiritual foundation. Marriage is a physical a physical activity with spiritual realities. A strong foundation. Psalm 11 verse 3 said, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Every construction, solid construction, requires a solid foundation. And the integrity of the foundation determines the destiny of the structure. The integrity, how qualitative the foundation. There is something in building they call structural integrity. The integrity of the foundation determines the destiny of the construction or the structure. There was a skyscraper some time ago that I heard the story of that had a crack on the 12th floor. And they traced the defect to the foundation. Somebody was doing an illegal activity in the foundation that affected the structure in the 12th floor. So lay foundation. You know the story Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. Let's read it quickly. Time is going but let me see what I can do. He said, therefore whosoever heareth these saints of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these things of mine. Now, let's stop there. The winds came, the flood came, the storm came, but, the, but it stood because of his foundation. How many of you know that? In the journey of life, the winds and the storms and things can come. All of a sudden, the devil sends some people to jam your head and the head of your wife. All of a sudden, family gathers. They gather and then all of a sudden, they begin to say some things or do some things. All of a sudden, strange and sudden misunderstandings. Whatever. The wind, the storm and all that. He said, if it is standing on a solid foundation, it doesn't matter what comes against it. It can't do it anything. Hello? Anybody in courtship here? Please, don't let it just be a flesh, flesh thing. Hi. Just to say I'm missing you. Me too. <laughs> and then we are 
chatting, chatting, chatting for the next two hours, three hours. You know? And then all is just fleshly things. What, what did you eat today? I ate b- a beans and, and chips and, and uh, uh, plantain, even though I didn't finish it. What of you, what did you eat? I ate um, Garui Tofonobu. Everything, everything they are talking about is just flesh and canal and everything. Don't make it work like that. My wife and I, we had a rugged day of fasting and prayer for two years and four months, once every week, to pray for the future of our life together while the courtship was on. To pray for the children yet unborn. To pray for the ministry yet to, to, to start. To pray for everything. We prayed, we fasted. If I travel, I'm in another town and she's in another town. When, we, when it is time to break the fast, we agree on the prayer points to agree upon. We did that for two years and four months. I had another day of fasting. She had her own day of fasting. But the two of us, we had a common day to fast and pray. If I saw a revelation, I share with her. She read the scripture, saw something that touched her, she will share it with me. If I read a book that touched my life, I will give it to her to read. So that we can flow with the same mindset. Foundation determines destination. Am I communicating at all? Nothing happens by chance. And the foundation is the foundation of prayer and the foundation of purity. Foundation of what? My purity. Was that not Hebrews chapter 12 verse 4 that said that marriage is honorable in all but the bed undefiled. And said, Woemongers and adulterers, God will judge. Hebrews 13 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is undefiled. The purity of the bed is the strength of marital foundation. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Every time there is illegal activity between a man and a woman before they marry it weakens the mari- it weakens the marital foundation every episode of immorality is a further weakness to the future hello that is why some people will love themselves so much and then they keep on going into immorality before they marry and before you know it the man comes and says i'm not interested again and the girl said, what have I done wrong? I remember a girl, she said, I've entered five relationships, none worked. I asked only one question, was there in immorality involved? Yes. Which one? All of them. So by the time the man has gotten what he thinks he wants, and got so cheaply. Question is, this is too cheap. You know, when you price a car and the price is too cheap, you suspect it. Something must be wrong with this car for it to be sold at this price. The the, the real ones are 5 million. How can they say (laughs) 300,000? Something wrong. Am I communicating at all? How many of you know that when you drive a brand new car from the parking lot, the, 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 the mileage is normally zero, 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 zero. By the time you move it and the mileage has reduced by one kilometer, it has been devalued. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when, we, when they say the marital bed should be pure. It's not for any other reason other than to safeguard the future and ensure that the foundation is not weakened by sin. It's not weakened. Weakened. 
Somebody say amen. Somebody say it louder, amen. Did God speak to anybody here at all? So lay a strong foundation. Be spiritual. And because we, we have more temptations now than 25 years ago. How many of you understand that that is true? As the end of the world is approaching, iniquity is multiplying. Things are getting worse in terms of things. Marriage are failing more. All manner of things are happening. If there is any time to be more spiritual, it is now. Now that marriages are failing more than before. Somebody say amen. Lay a strong spiritual foundation. Number six. Never feel obligated to continue in relationship if conviction is lost. Never feel obligated to continue in relationship if conviction is lost, if your peace is lost. This is very important because I've seen a lot of people who ended in a regrettable future because of sentiments. Never put sentiments ahead of principles. Never put sentiments ahead of substance. The Bible said in Psalm 85 verse 8, he said, I will hear what the Lord, what God the Lord will speak for he will speak peace. You started relationship very well. All of a sudden you are under pressure. You see the man, you are ten stop. He sees you, he is ten stop. Every telephone exchange becomes a quarrel. You know, you begin to see strange character manifestations. And you are wondering, if I can see this kind of thing now, what will happen when we get married? And then sentiment begins to tell you, don't disappoint anybody. Just go ahead. Don't disappoint anybody. Just go ahead. You know, the man loves you. Don't disappoint him. And you are seeing handwritings on the wall. Or oh, another mind. Don't break anybody's heart. And don't misunderstand me. I don't like men who break women's heart. That is why, if you are not sure, don't start in the first place. But, here you are. Your wife-to-be was angry to a point where she took knife. Only overpowered by witnesses. Say, don't break anybody's heart. Or oh, another voice of sentiment say, People will say you, you, you are confused. This is the second one or the third. People will say you don't know what you want out of life. So just go ahead. Try and make it work. And go. And, and you have seen signals. Sir, with your eyes open, don't enter the grave. Am I communicating at all? Or am I wasting your time? Or am I wasting my own time? No. Don't ever feel obligated. It is never too late to make a U-turn when you realize you have missed the road. A young lady sent me a text message and he says she's in relationship with a man. Already they have compromised each other's sins, but she has repented, they have repented. Long story made sure the man and herself are quarreling on certain issues. And the man said to her, I am going to marry you. Your people say I should bring so and so. I will bring it. But let none of them near our house. 
Your mother cannot near our house. Your father cannot near our house. None of your relations. Let them bring the list. I'll, I'll, I'll pay it. The girl sent me a test. I said, but we love each other. Should I go ahead? I say, run for your life. Run for your life. The handwritings are too much. Some time ago, I was, I was, they brought a girl to me. This girl traveled from all over, from, uh, all, uh, from, from across the world to, she lived in another country. Marriage, she was coming for wedding. When she arrived for the wedding, he saw the man to wed, saw every circumstance, <laughs> no peace. She says she cannot marry this marriage. They say, why? He said, uh, I don't really know the man. I don't really know. So they brought her to me so I can talk to her to make her marry the man. I say, me too. I am not sure. I can, I can convince a person. Say, God is ready. People are ready. That is not, this is a whole human being's life that is about to be sentenced probably to a lifetime of misery because of some sentiments. No, sir. Is God speaking to anybody here? That is why, in order not to disappoint somebody, what, what phone is there? What is it doing? In order not to disappoint, please sit down. In order not to disappoint somebody, not to disappoint parents and all that, be sure before you make the move. But if you have made the move, no matter how far you went, and the signals are no longer correct. And if you love God, he will show the signals. You love God, God will love you. He will show you handwritings. You will see many things. I've, I've dealt with such challenges. And the man or the woman will tell me, if I say I didn't see this thing coming, I'll be lying. He said, I will be lying. It's my fault. I saw it, but I, I was strong-headed. I went in. That will never be your portion. Say that will never be your portion. If you are saying amen, say louder, amen. Let me round up with a final point. Round off with a final point. Never feel obligated. And finally, before I go to the final, there are things that are better than others. If there are many bad things, breaking somebody's heart, or living in a hell forever. Disappointing somebody. Or aborting the whole of your life's destiny. Because you got hooked to the wrong marriage. One is better than the other. One is less. A person disappointed can be reappointed later. A person jilted, God forbid. Can be tilted and lifted later. God forbid you will never be that person jilted. But one is better than the other. Okay. Let me just go like a sheep to the slaughter. And manage this man. Maybe that management might end in family coming to carry some devil's dead body, not your own. It, it shall never be your portion. In life, there are some things that are better than the other. I'm speaking to you with all the passion I possess. Finally, never entertain the possibility of divorce. Don't step into marriage as a trial. If it doesn't work out, I walk out. Never. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 27 verse 3. 
never entertain the possibility of divorce. Not to talk of remarriage. Don't, don't let it cross your mind. Our people say what you don't see, don't, don't see you. And what you see determines what you see. There are people who are busy calculating, okay, if this one doesn't work, uh, the next one, how will it be? Um, what will I find? No. That is the reason why people start threatening each other already. One month of marriage, I will walk out of this marriage. I will walk out of this. Is it insanity or what? Even do people walk out of classroom like that? I, hello? You don't walk out of a classroom like that? No. Whenever you are stepping into my, don't ever agree to marry who you don't want to live with for life. For life. For life. Marry with no plan B. If that is your mindset, you will be as careful as a village cock. Or hand for that matter. You are married with no plan B in mind. This is not something I'm about to try. This is not a rehearsal. I am not about to see whether it will work. It has to work. So I must marry what will work. Somebody say amen. And both men and women. Never. Beloved, I have, I will stop here tonight. Have a clear picture. Reject every negative mindset. Know who you want to marry. Seek God's will. Lay a strong spiritual foundation. Don't feel obligated to continue if you have lost your peace. Never entertain the possibility of divorce. In 25 years, has it crossed my mind or my wife's mind to the extent that we have discussed? Well, I don't know. I'm thinking of something else. N not in the dream. Not inside dream. Don't let it. Don't arm the devil. Don't give, don't give the devil thoughts and words he can use to finish your life. Somebody say amen. Just a word to married couples. You're on your journey to your glorious destiny. What is the key? Husband, wife. Number one, be a Christian. Be a Christian. Every good Christian will be a good husband. Every good Christian will be a good wife. Don't tell me a man is a committed church person and beating his wife, slapping his wife. His wife has no food to eat children. He's not a Christian. Be a Christian. Number two, be your wife's husband and be your husband's wife. <laughs> be your wife's husband. Be your husband's wife. What is the meaning of being your wife's husband? Be everything to your wife that a husband should be. Caregiver. Affection giver. Resources provider. Wife defender.
There are some people, if not for God, their wives will be walking on the road naked. Husband doesn't know the last time he gave them CC. I think, what a man. There are those who tell their wife, when he say food money, say, what about your salary? That is uselessness of masculinity. Did you marry her for, for salary? I have never asked my wife for one naira that she got, either by favor or she earned for, because she, she, has, she, she gets her own finances. If she goes to preach somewhere, they give her an honorarium. She goes to whatever. I can say, how much was it? Is it in the dream? I craze. Grace, catch me. What kind of colossiousness is that? How much did they give you? All right, bring it. Or well, she came next man with time and said, um, um, so, uh, food money for me. So what about the money you said they gave you last time? Use it. Man. It, there are some men who are the reason why nothing works around them. Because God is watching you. And the way you are dealing with that woman in your life, he said, if I give you more money, you will marry another wife. So let me keep him in wretchedness and poverty. The wife has to beg for food that he will cook for the husband and, 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 and the children. Has to beg for children's clothes. Has to call with trepidation asking for school fees. Your own wife struggling on the road. You can afford anything. She's jumping from Okada to Okada. You are enjoying your air-conditioned car. The real man will prefer to trek for his wife to be comfortable. The real man. When I speak about these things, it, my, it, it, just, it, just, it, just, it just does something to me. And people are putting church and pastor under pressure permanently for breakthrough, for this, for that to work. From when it was only 2,500 that I could afford, my wife was on a monthly allowance. Monthly. Then 5,000, then 10,000, then 50,000. Then I can keep on going. And that money is not permitted to be spent on food money, on house money, on children. That is for whatever she wants to do with her life. When anybody is sent to her from the village, she should have money to send to them. Somebody say amen. This kind of talk now might not endear me to some men. But I'm not paid salary to, 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 to preach. And I will tell you the truth. And I'm saying that in love. That girl, that white woman there is not smiling for nothing. If you, if you saw the seed of destiny that uh, <laughs> they read today, I was the one reading the seed of destiny. She was just smiling. I said, I said what is the cause of this smile now? Smiling without provocation. Till the end. I don't know I say. Smile, smile warm, bite you. <laughs> smile warm. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Please be your wife's husband. Let her be able to say, that is my husband. And she means that man is to me what a father should be, what a brother should be, what 
what, what a, a, an uncle should be, what a husband, anything a male figure should be to a woman, he is in my life. Then you have a stressless ride onto destiny. Be your husband's wife. Whatever a woman, a wife should be to a husband, be your husband's wife in submission, in respect, in praying for him, in wishing him well, in ensuring that you dissipate the pressures of his life. You are not going to be the cause of pressure for him. No. Be your husband's wife. That was number two. Number three. Forgive easily. In this journey, when they say a man and his wife did not quarrel, it didn't mean that quarrelable things did not arise. It didn't mean that quarrel causing situations did not rise. <laughs> but the man forgives easily and excuses both the man and the woman excuses the faults. I sent my wife a text message by 2 o'clock. I tried to reach her on phone and I could not reach her. And I sent her a text message by 2 o'clock and there was no reply till about 7. I am in the office, she's somewhere else. Problem is, why should I try to reach my wife and I cannot reach my wife? That can, you can go to town with it. You can fully go to town with it. I will deal with this woman when I reach home. Let me reach first. Where can you be that I called you by two? You didn't hear me. And I sent a message. This is five hours. I'm so sorry, sir. Sorry for what? Sorry for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and then one devil will just come near your ears talk more, talk more the devil will be slapping your head say so he's taking you for granted he's taking you for granted no what you told yourself my wife doesn't disrespect me not even in the dream. You see that the phone is somewhere, the battery is down, there is a very genuine reason. Let me hear from her first. And then, when you eventually are able to reach her, you say, oh sir, I'm so sorry. In fact, my battery went flat. Every attempt to charge the battery could not charge. I had to send the phone for repairs. It didn't even come out. It doesn't even come back now. Oh, I thought as much. I know that you cannot deliberately see my text and not answer or be. What I'm suggesting is excuse the fault even before you hear explanation. Excuse. Just the Bible says, love believeth all things. You, you, are, you are defending the person before he defended himself. The question is, does my wife hate me? No. If the answer is no, will she deliberately want to hurt me? No. Then let me find out the details. Don't judge actions before you understand intentions. When it pertains to marital relationship, don't judge actions before you understand intentions. Ensure that you, you are able to understand, okay, there must be something. Otherwise, the devil can make you, can give you reason for arguments daily, confrontations continually. Continu and, and when the devil realizes that you are, you are enjoying it and that he is succeeding, phew, he gives you more assignment. Huh. What did I say? 
Forgive easily. Excuse mistakes. Number four, never take each other for granted. Never. Never allow over familiarity to kill the wine of marriage. Woman, try and keep yourself in the in a pursuable mode. Pursuable. Because when you were, before you people married, you were walking as if your leg does not touch ground. Have you ever seen some people as if they want to divide their body? Honey, how? Oh, I'm happy to see you. Wow. You look so smart today. Thank you. <laughs> and then you, 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 you package yourself, tantalize yourself, and the man is pursuing you. With you, then all of a sudden, he returns back home, shower cap is on the head. Some retired dress that you are not able to call whether it is gown or dress. Scattered in the bedroom and in the parlor. And then you want the man's eyes to suffer corruption. He will not allow his only one to see corruption. <laughs> Ask yourself the question, if that man saw you like this before you married, will he near you? <laughs> will he near you? Tell my wife at times, that particular dress, I need it to disappear. I say, either burn it or bury it or disappear it. I don't want to see it. Just disappear it. What kind of dress hanging like hanger like this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very practical. Though. You have to you have to save your head. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am I communicating at all? What point are we making? What was the last point I said? Never take the other person for granted. Some people say the secretaries told the husband or house girl or something. How have you composed your life compared with how the other people? Here you are scattered at home and your husband has a female secretary in the office who is dangling herself for him daily like carrot. He's just dangling. Sir, will you mind tea? Say, go and give me tea. Okay, I'm coming, sir. <laughs> and then he reaches home. He sees the exact opposite. That is not correct. Don't take the man for granted. That the man married you didn't mean he became blind. <laughs> Did you, you didn't understand the meaning of what I said? Did you get the meaning of what I said? Don't take your wife also for granted. Hello? Don't take 
each other for granted. Let me say two more points and we are true. We are going to break courses tonight. Anybody ready for that? Everything that is fighting you from your father's house tonight, they shall be broken. Just in five minutes and then we shall be true. Never take each other for granted. Number four or five now. Remain The best friend of your spouse remain the best friend of your spouse. Put yourself in the position where your, your husband can confide in you to a point where he has no other, he has no confidant better than you. Let your wife be your friend. Let your husband be your best friend. Anything short of this will bring problems. Remain the best friend of your spouse. Number six, be mindful of negative family patterns. Just be mindful. There are many of us, we have come out of families where marriages don't work. Just be mindful. As you see yourself trying to quarrel with your wife, just, in, uh, just remember that your, 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 your relations' marriages don't work. Your, 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 your family people's marriages don't work. And the same devil is about to fight your own marriage now. So once you have that mindset, then you are ready to fight what fought others. Am I communicating? Be mindful. And, for the, and, and, and so that you can fight it and resist it and refuse it. That's the purpose of being mindful of negative family patterns. To fight it, to resist it, to refuse it. And finally, be mindful of your next generation. Be mindful of your children's future, the next generation. How you live is a picture for them. The battle you will not fight. You leave it for them to fight. Be mindful. Let your marriage work so that your children can have a positive example. Let, let, let be successful in your, your, your relationship so that your son can understand what a pattern wife can be. And the Lord will help us. In Jesus precious name. For now, place your right hand on your forehead and leave the other hand up. I'm still going to do what I'm about to do now there. But just briefly. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I come before you. To surrender my life to you. And to reject. Every curse. Ancestral curse. Generational curse. Family curse. Every anti-marital curse, every witchcraft curse, every occultic curse, every force of hell fighting marriages that is fighting my life now, I reject you. I refuse you. You have no place in my life. I receive my freedom in Jesus' name. Place your right hand on your forehead. Leave the other hand up. I prophesy upon everyone here today. Everything that has limited your life, delayed your life, maritally and otherwise, the delay is over forever. For everyone that is trusting God to be a... Dr. Misenetje, can you join me please? Solid rock, I stand all over the ground. He's sinking sand all over the ground. He's sinking sand. Every oil that has helped us, grace, help, and ability of God, these 25 years in marriage. Whatever you have seen in our lives that is a desire in your life 
I declare, I decree, it is released. It is released. They are released. Every spell of inability to get married, the yoke of singleness, I declare it is broken. The right man, the right woman in this season shall locate you. Every troublesome marriage receive the help of God in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting for the fruit of the womb in marriage receive your answers now in the name of Jesus. Every family with financial crisis receive breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Every family with challenged children whether the challenge of sickness or the challenge of waywardness receive intervention in the name of Jesus I decree I declare and I prophesy those marriages that God said with between now and this time next year will be established from this occasion. Step into your marriages in the name of Jesus. Role model marriages and role model relationships. I declare your release to your generation. In the name of Jesus. Overnight. Supernatural encounters. Every mystery around your destiny that has not allowed you to go forward between now and that Monday the Lord will reveal it and destroy it shall be totally cancelled in the name of Jesus totally destroyed in the name of Jesus anti-marital spells are broken today in the name of Jesus Every marriage in the realm of the spirit fighting your physical marriage is annulled in the name of Jesus. Every covenant of hell fighting your life and your destiny is arrested in the name of Jesus. I disconnect you from marine spirit connections, from occultic connections, from witchcraft manipulations. We declare your freedom today. Everything that could not resist us or stop us or hinder what God wants to do in our lives and is doing our lives will never be able to resist you or hinder you or stop Amen. you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go forth and return back with your testimonies Amen. in the name of the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Give Jesus seven hallelujahs. One. Hallelujah. Two. Four, Hallelujah. five, Hallelujah. six, Hallelujah. and seven. Hallelujah. Those in the front, please remain. Shake the hands of seven people. Congratulate them. We we'll see you on Sunday, the Easter Sunday celebration, and then Saturday home church, and of course Monday at the uh, Wednesday tomorrow. Please, Wednesday tomorrow is going to be an explosive midweek service tomorrow explosive midweek service tomorrow power communion service dealing with the spirits of disease and affliction and premature death ensure you are here tomorrow god bless you can this go forth with a celebration please please take speak somebody from the room just a minute